Hello, Daytime Emmy fans. Uh, Daniel Montgomery here from GoldDerby.com, here with our contributor, Tony Ruiz, uh, here to talk about the Daytime Emmy race for uh, Best Lead Actor in a Drama Series. Uh, and these categories were uh, voted on based on sample performance reels uh, that were watched by Blue Ribbon panels, uh, actually during the nominations round. So when the nominees were announced, the winner was already among them decided. Uh, it's just a matter of finding out who on April 29th when the awards are handed out. Uh, we're going to talk about these nominees, what they submitted, and who we think is going to win. So first of all, the nominees are James Reynolds for Days of Our Lives, uh, Billy Miller, General Hospital, Michael Easton, General Hospital, Peter Bergman, The Young and the Restless, and John McCook, The Bold and the Beautiful. Uh, now, I, I would say in two-thirds of the Emmy races, we are in agreement, and this is not an exception. So, Tony, tell uh, everyone who we are both predicting and tell us about his submission. Um, I, we're both predicting uh, that uh, James Reynolds will win his first Emmy after almost four decades uh, on daytime. Uh, James Reynolds plays Abe Carver and his in his reel all, all revolves around uh, his son Theo uh, being shot by a police officer. Um, Theo was uh, breaking into a building or caught trying to break into a building uh, and ran from the police and was holding a, a, a scanner sort of object device in his hand and the police told him to took it around, turn around and, and uh, Theo has autism so uh, he didn't quite necessarily know what to do in that situation so when he turned around with the object in his hand the officer, uh, JJ, played by younger actor nominee Casey Moss, shoots him and uh, the reel opens with Abe just kind of learning about this and going after JJ. Uh, how could JJ, you know, shoot Theo? And when JJ, when JJ says, "Well, he was wearing a hoodie and I couldn't see his face," that just sets Abe off. And Abe spends most of the reel uh, being really, really furious at JJ. Um, and then he's also furious when JJ's mother. Uh, Jennifer tries to convince Abe to forgive uh, JJ, and he won't do it. He says, and "I think nothing... reasonably so." I think Abe is yes. justified. Like Jennifer is really pushy. Like, I know your son is fighting for his life, but my son has like hurt feelings right now. Uh, yeah. So, like, I'm with Abe on that one. Yeah. Um, and then ultimately, uh, the real covers uh, about a six week uh, span of episodes. Um, Eventually, uh, Abe does go to JJ and forgive him, and then the reel ends with them all on Christmas Eve around Theo's bedside, and Theo wakes up, and everybody's happy, and it's a happy ending. Um, to me, this was like the easiest call. I, I remember watching this storyline uh, last year when it aired and thought, I don't know whether uh, James Reynolds is going to go lead or supporting, but he's going to submit this material and he could probably win with it. And he submits perfectly. It's It's got the range. Uh, it's got the sympathy. It's got a timeliness with all the issues of officer-involved shootings of uh, unarmed black men in the news. Um, and James Reynolds is one of those people that you know, I mean, he's been on Days of Our Lives almost continuously you know, since 1981 or 82, um, and yet this is only his, this is only his um, fourth nomination, um, and so I really feel like this is this is his year, um, and I feel like just he has far and away the best reel out of all those. Though I do not think he is unbeatable. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I I had like a couple of quibbles with this reel. I thought it it you know given. The nature of the offense, I think it jumps to the forgiveness a little fast. Um, you know, without any, without enough bridging material. Uh, you know, Jennifer guilts him for a moment because uh, uh, Abe himself was uh, perpetrated uh, 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 a shooting of an unarmed man, and and he was forgiven. So she manages to guilt him into forgiving her son while his son is still uh, fighting for his life. And so I, I could have I. Just personally speaking, I would have I could have gone with you know even more anger there, um, but that's really just quibbling. It's it's really a just a dynamite 
real in terms of the span of material he covers, the, the cohesiveness and the arc he covers, the broad range of emotions he covers and tones. Um, yeah, it, it's real. And, and, you know, the overdue factor, which isn't always persuasive, but every once in a while, if you get that combination of the right storyline, the right reel and the right actor at the right time, you know, it reminds me of Doug Davidson a few years ago for The Young and the Restless. You know, he was under honored for that show for years and then he finally won Best Actor. Uh, it really feels like his moment. But I think we both agree on the one who is closest to him uh, in terms of uh, potentially upsetting. Um, and for me, it's ironic because I I am always I'm always biased against short reels because like you had 200 episodes of a soap during a year and you can't put together more than five minutes on a reel, then I'm not inclined to predict you to win the Emmy or you know vote for you you know think that a voter would be inclined to give you the Emmy. But John McCook, uh, Bold and Beautiful, uh, makes the most of about five minutes. Um, uh, it's 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 all it's all meat no 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 filler uh you know the first scene he is laying into uh his wife and his son who have had an affair um because parent child love triangles are just a thing all over the bold and beautiful especially um and in the next scene you know and, and that first scene is you know the kind of you know fire and brimstone anger that you usually expect you know that's that's your big impact emmy moment but what's interesting is that the next scene is quieter and that's his Emmy moment. I think it's the best acted moment in this entire category, um, where he is speaking very softly. It's almost entirely monologue, or enti I don't remember if if, uh, uh, if his son in that reel even speaks, uh, uh, because it's so much on John McCook, uh, just talking about how he loved his son, how he raised his son, and how his son has taken whatever he's wanted, no matter the cost. And he says, you know, I loved being your father, but you are you will never be my son again. Um, and it's it's such a gut punch and it builds so gradually to that final moment. It is really fantastic. I just wish it were five minutes longer. Yeah, and and I, I'll go even farther. I think that 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 three and a half minute uh, segment, that three and a half minute, and it is almost entirely monologue. I think Thorsten K says like two lines of dialogue, but it's almost all John McCook. And it's so, I think it's the best acted moment in all of the acting categories. It, it's the one that I love the most. Um, and especially because it starts off with, with, uh, with Eric, John McCook's character, actually apologizing to his son. You know, I'm sorry that I've said these things to you. It and then really he, it starts. It seems like it's going to be a reconciliation scene. At yeah, the beginning. it's it's a, it's such a fake out, and I think that's why it's and McCook builds it so beautifully um, that when you realize you realize when it starts to turn, and then you you want to follow it to the end, and that that last scene where he kisses his son's head and then disowns him is is an absolute gut punch of a moment and i i agree with you uh that i can't believe that with this storyline there wasn't just one more scene he could he could have added um uh, but it would not i a win for him would not shock me and nor would i even be that upset about it because you know like james reynolds i mean uh, john mccook has been on bold and beautiful since the since the premiere episode yeah. Um, 1987. Yeah, and um, this is his third nomination. Um, so he's very much, in a sense, underrewarded, um, just in terms of nominations. Yeah, even though he's been, you know, a major focal point of that show for its for its entire duration. But he's the only one that I could see as competition, as real competition for for Reynolds. Yeah, I agree, and it's 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 going to be interesting because. Uh, uh, Bold and the Beautiful has only ever won this category once before, and that was last year when it was uh, Scott Clifton, the young whippersnapper who who got there first before John McCook. And uh, Days of Our Lives has only won this category for one actor. It won the first two Best Actor prizes ever given out for McDonald Carey, and it has never won this category since. So you've got, you know, you know, if we're right that one of these two will win, you're going to have a, a relatively under-rewarded show in this category and an overdue actor taking home their first Emmy. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's really exciting to see. 
Uh, but you know, I, I think there are good moments in the other three reels too. I just, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think it's they're going to factor in. Uh, uh, yeah, but we've been certainly wrong before. Uh, you know, next you've got uh, Peter Bergman from uh, The Young and the Restless. Uh, the Meryl Streep, the Meryl Streep of the daytime Emmys, and and Meryl Streep in so specific a way because Meryl Streep has twenty one Oscar nominations and three wins, and Peter Bergman has twenty one Emmy nominations and three wins. Uh, so it's sort of like the polar opposite of of John McCook and James Reynolds, who you know, uh, who they hardly ever get nominated, and now they might win. Whereas Peter Bergman almost always gets nominated, and he hardly ever wins. Uh, you know, but he does have three, so he's he's certainly not uh, he's certainly not suffering for Emmys. Um, and he submitted uh, a, a couple of storylines. He submitted scenes involving uh, the takeover of his company, uh, uh, which is uh, also featured in Eileen Davidson's reel for Best Actress. Um, you know, she she he's angry with her. Uh, he's angry with um, he's angry with uh, uh, his his ex wife Phyllis, who is involved in this really weird corporate espionage kind of scenario with uh, Jack's brother, who Jack hates, is furious with, uh, probably because Jack's brother <laughs> slept with his wife, um, uh, Phyllis. As you do. As you do. Um, and, and so, but then he has tender scenes involving his mother, uh, played by Marla Adams, who's up the Best Supporting Actress. That character is uh, having, is, is, in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, and and she's beginning to be diagnosed, and they're coming to terms with this, um, and so he has tender scenes around that, and then he closes the reel with uh, a scene with Billy, uh, played by Jason Thompson, who uh, was nominated for five Emmys when he was on General Hospital, um, and uh, he sort of lashes out at him again, but uh, uh, Billy kind of uh, puts him in his place, and the reel ends with him putting. Uh, Billy pulling, putting him in his place. It ends with a Jason Thompson monologue, which I think is uh, uh, doesn't help Peter Bergman this year. Uh, I, I I think he is good in all of his scenes. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the comedic scene at the beginning with Gloria. They're waking up together, and uh, you know it's it's sort of an unrelated comedic scene where they are not really they they don't care for each other at all, and they're kind of shocked and mutually disgusted to have slept together. So it's a lot of well acted scenes. None of them kind of rise to the level of James Reynolds or John McCook, and and they're a lot of them are so disconnected that even though it does give him good, good really decent amount of range, um, it doesn't quite give him that oomph. And and he gives <laughs> Jason Thompson that oomph scene at the very end of his own reel. Um, so so yeah, I don't I don't think he's going to be competitive this time. And that and and that last scene to me was the most problematic of the reel because. Um, because Jack is so unlikable in that scene, you know, to lash out at Billy, he brings up Billy's dead daughter and you're just like, what? And when you expect Billy to kind of like rage at Jack about that, he just kind of very calmly puts him in his place. And I was going, what's the appeal of this, of this scene? And, and you're right. It is a perfect scene for, uh, for, for Jason Thompson. Um, and I just can't see, I can't see Bergman winning with this reel, um, when he had so much more, he, he's had so many more, um, weighty reels in the past that he hasn't won with. Um, but, uh, speaking of Jason Thompson, his predecessor, Jason Thompson's predecessor in the role of, uh, Billy is actually, Another nominee, uh, Billy Miller for General Hospital. Uh, they Billy kind Miller... of switched soaps. B Billy Miller moved from The Young and the Restless to General Hospital, and then uh, 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 Jason Thompson moved from GH to YNR. Yeah, um, and of course, you almost need like uh, a cheat sheet to figure out what's going on in <laughs> in Billy Miller's reel because at first he's playing Jason Morgan. Uh, and he has some scenes where uh, Sam is uh, in the hospital and uh, has just given birth. And he has some tender scenes next to Sam's bedside and some tender scenes talking to the baby. And then it switches to this realization that Jay, that Billy Miller is not Jason Morgan. He's actually Andrew Kane, who is Jason Morgan's 
biological twin brother who used to look like Jason before he had facial reconstruction. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> and um, so it's him trying to deal with who he actually is and how that impacts his relationship with Sam. Um, it's a good, uh, it's a, it's a, you know, Billy Miller is somebody that the Emmys love. Um, he's won um, three times, I believe, three times out of, yeah. out of five nominations. So they clearly love his work. He got nominated, even though uh, Steve Burton, who plays the real Jason Morgan and is a past Emmy winner, uh, did not get nominated. Uh, so there's certainly something there. I just don't feel like there was enough um, big moments. It's a very subdued reel. It's a very um, subtle, uh, subtly emotional reel and doesn't have the fireworks or necessarily the, uh, the comprehensible factor <laughs> um, of some of the others. Um, that being said, we've seen this, that storyline, the Drew jason storyline pop up in several other people's reels so um uh who knows I, you can never count out billy miller as far as i'm concerned yeah it's interesting <clears throat> i think it's an issue because you know he won three times for playing billy abbott a different character and now i think he might be kind of handicapped by the character uh because one of the things that's so definitive about jason morgan is that he's kind of this deadpan understated quiet person like he's he doesn't the character does not at all lend himself to explosions of grand emotion, which is probably why Steve Burton only won one Emmy with that character and didn't win again until he played someone else on The Young and the Restless uh, last year. Um, and so, and that was another actor who made the switch. Uh, Steve Burton went from General Hospital, moved to Young and the Restless, moved back to General Hospital. Uh, you know, these soap operas are, you know, there are only four left on the air, so they keep swapping talent back and forth. Um, and so, you know, so, so you get, you know, his scene at Sam's bedside is, is really affecting. Uh, like, it's, it's another bedside monologue that we've seen in this category. James Reynolds also, and we saw in uh, Supporting Actress with Michelle Morgan. Uh, so it's a, it's a common kind of scene to see, but he plays it really well. Then the scene with the baby, you know, where he's expressing his fear, it's another powerful scene, but it's at the same kind of level of emotion. And then when he finds out that he's not really Jason, he's Drew Kane, it's at the same kind of level of emotion. And then the last scene with Sam, where they're they're trying to decide whether they should get married anyway, even though he think he now realizes he's a completely different person, it's a good scene, but it's at the same kind of level of emotion. And so, you know, it doesn't quite give him the opportunity to give him those peaks and valleys, those ups and downs, those, you know, that, that wide array that, that you could show voters and that he had shown voters uh, when, when he had that to play as uh, Billy Abbott. Uh, so yeah, I don't, think, I don't think he has quite enough of the range to get him there. And I think that's a, an issue also with Michael Easton, uh, also nominated for General Hospital and his first ever nomination. Um, but surprisingly less so. Um, what's interesting is that Michael Easton is more known for that kind of subdued, understated acting. And yet this reel does have quite a bit of rangy emotions in it. Um, it's a re relatively short reel. Uh, you know, he starts, he's detoxing from a drug called Zen Zen, um, which you don't need to know the context of the Zen Zen storyline to understand uh, uh, his, his, uh, his uh, detoxing there, which is good because that storyline is kind of uh, confusing. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so he's like really kind of agitated because he's, he has told uh, Hayden Barnes, played by Rebecca Budding, um, his girlfriend, to tape him to a chair uh, until he is through his withdrawal symptoms, but he's now changed his mind. He's begging to be released. He tries to convince her and she refuses. So he gets to be like sweaty and agitated and, and screams a couple of times, which is, you know, very unlike Michael Easton, what we usually see from him uh, performance wise, but very effective. Uh, and then you get one of the quieter scenes. It's sort of comic where he and Hayden are realizing that Hayden has uh, just discovered that she's pregnant, that they're, you know, he's the father of the baby. And, they're not sure if they are ready to be parents. And it's a sweet scene, but it's also a little bit, it's droll. It has a kind of comic tone to it, which is not the kind of comedy that turns off Emmy voters. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, someone tries to submit a comedic scene for range and it doesn't quite go over. But in this case, it's still within the emotional context of these two finding out this life-changing information. Um, and then in the next scene, he and Hayden are fighting for reasons that are unclear. 
Um, and then in the last scene, he is in the middle of this sting operation of some kind, um, and Hayden has left, and he believes that their baby has, that she has lost the baby. Um, and and she's sort of, he's sort of going over the what ifs, and, and it, it has a nice emotional kind of range to it. It's just, it, you know, compared to everyone else in this category, I don't feel like there's quite enough there. The reel goes through a lot of, there are a lot of confusing tonal shifts and storyline shifts and not everything is clear and not everything connects. And um, yeah, I'm really thrilled that Michael Easton is nominated for an Emmy finally. I, I, I think he deserved, you know, uh, an Emmy for uh, poor Charles when he played the vampire Caleb Morley. I think he deserves at least a nomination for his 10 years on One Life to Live as uh, John McBain. Uh, this is now the third character he's playing on General Hospital in like six years, which, uh, you know, partially due to contractual issues with the former One Life to Live character and, you know, a former Port Charles character's twin brother. And it's he's been through a lot. I'm glad he's here. He deserves to be here. But I don't think this reel is quite going to get him to the finish line. No, and, and that I think that's the factor that hurts him the most is the confusion aspect because there were scenes that I had to actually go and look up the synopsis of the full episode to figure out the context of what that scene was, uh, particularly the the breakup scene with him and Rebecca Buttig. I was like, why are you guys mad at each other? Why is she mad at you? What What's happening here? Uh, and it doesn't give a whole lot of context. He, he's again, he starts off with a really strong, um, you know, and, and Emmy voters love drug addicts. Um, <laughs> Eric Stuart Marshoff. Damon, Eric Marshoff wanted to Stuart Damon <laughs> when he finally won his Emmy on General Hospital. He said he got to play the oldest, fattest drug addict in the history of television. Um, so Emmy voters love a good uh, addiction storyline. Um, I, I. I, I kind of wish that there had been more with that addiction storyline. I think, you know, that could have maybe lent itself to make it make the real, the whole reel more competitive. Um, but yeah, that is, I had forgotten that he had that many characters on GH uh, cause I forgot about Silas and. Yeah. And to, to, to explain he, after one life to live was canceled, John Bay moved over to general hospital. Uh, but then there were contractual issues with the uh, the company that took over One Life to Live to, you know, when they tried to relaunch it as an online soap. Um, and so they had to get rid of the John McBain character, but they wanted to keep Michael Easton. So they brought back uh, Caleb, uh, you know, as they sort of, or Stephen Clay, who was Caleb's vampire alter ego. But that, you know, the vampires on Port Charles doesn't mesh with what's going on with GH now. So they kind of retconned a lot of that. And then they brought in uh, uh, Michael Eastman as Stephen Clay's twin brother, Silas. He played Silas for a couple of years, was killed off. And then a few months later, uh, they brought him back as Hamilton Finn, who is the character he's currently playing and who he is nominated for now. So he has been through a lot of, of characters on one show. I don't, I don't think it's quite precedented what, you know, like, did you guys get did you did you guys get all that? Did you guys get, <laughs> and it's, get that and it's connection not even there? Dual roles that like like usually you'll see an actor with multiple personalities or multiple alter egos or lookalikes and stuff like that. No, it's just like four, three or four distinct characters who have just kind of succeeded each other, played by the same actor. Yeah. So so we're I think we're both in agreement that this is uh, this is you know that somebody probably is going to win. I think the only, uh, somebody is probably gonna win their first Emmy, either James Reynolds or uh, John McCook, but probably James Reynolds, which would yes. also be historic because he would be only, and this is an embarrassing statistic, uh, only the third African-American actor to win in this category and the first in 32 years. Um, so it's past, time for this yeah so we've got james reynolds to win and john mccook to block uh to use uh, hollywood squares lingo <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, I agree it's got to be one of those two and it'll be nice to see someone take home a first emmy it's like no offense to peter bergman or billy miller but once you have three it's like you know if you have another guy with a really strong reel you know let, they, they should get a turn at the podium. Uh, so uh, you everyone can make your predictions at goldderby.com. Um, if you agree with us, if you think we're horribly wrong, which we have been before and we will be again. Um, yep. 
maybe not in this category, but it probably in some categories. Um, the awards are going to be handed out on April 29th. And uh, thank you, Tony, for joining me. And thank you, everyone, for watching.